Hello, welcome to Take Three uh, in my kitchen. Um, I hope we're good. Um, rain's gone, rain stopped. Horrible morning. Um, and we're going to talk about micro learning today. Now learning, as we call it, here's the Fraser. Very exciting. Uh, make my tea. Good time today. I've got a hobnob, like a hobnob. The dunking biscuit, the hobnob. Um, and I've got a question. Um, it, I've got a question because it's um, it's Wimbledon, and that's what I'm training. So it's Wimbledon, and my question is about tennis. I thought I'd do a tennis-related question. So my question is, how long was the longest tennis match ever? That's my question. How long? In hours and minutes. How long was the longest tennis match ever? Uh, bonus points if you know who's playing. But uh, so, how long was the longest tennis match? So, Wimbledon related question. So, that's, uh, that's what I thought we'd do. So, I just sort my tea out. Um, I've been all right. I'm happy now the sun's out. So, we're going to talk about micro learning today. I kind of touched on it a, a week or two ago, but we're, we'll talk about it again. Seven hours, 32 minutes. Well, how long is a normal tennis match? Well, Gav, are you not, are you not watching? Um, <laughs> um, so a normal tennis match, well, the maximum there could be is five sets. That would be a men's tennis match. So how long would a set of tennis take? Times by five. Um, it's a... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's. I don't know. Do I look like a man who plays tennis? Um, you just kind of watch it. It's all right. Um, but remember, I'll give you a little hint then, Gab. So there's um, normally in a man's men's tennis match, it goes six all for each set, and then it'll go to what they call a tie break. So there'll just be 13 games in each set. But in the final set of tennis, in certain competitions, they just keep playing until somebody's won by two clear games. So it can go on for quite a long time, potentially. Um, and I see your better half has gone for seven hours, 32 minutes. So if it is longer than that, you see, Gav, you'd only have to put seven hours, 33, and um, you'd be closer, wouldn't you? Or if you think it's less than that, seven hours, 31, and you'd be closer. So... And I'm currently winning. Gav's going lower, 7 hours 31. Um, I like the competition. It, that, that's like a sport, the hearts. Anyway, um, right, there's a few other people. So type, type numbers in, people. Type numbers. Don't let the hearts win because they're currently first and second. So we, we don't want that to happen. Clara will come in with a guess soon. Uh, she was always good for a guess. Um, but anyway, let's talk about, um, let's talk about micro-learning. So... Because bizarrely, we're spending more and more time on our screen. That's uh, and it can be up to um, this is disturbing, but I did a bit of research. You can spend like up to 11 hours looking at a screen and not the same screen. So that could be your phone, that could be a laptop, that could be a TV, but you can spend nearly half a day looking at a screen, which is uh, fairly dangerous. Um, so micro learning's kind of picked up a little bit, really. Um, why, why is it so good? Well, because it's brief, because we're used to things a lot more um, bite-sized, consumable, that kind of thing. So it makes it more digestible for us all. Um, the idea is that it should be simple and there should be greater elements of fun available with bite size. 11 hours, rookie numbers. What's this? Are you Googling, Gavin Hart? Um, <laughs> um, so digestible and it, should, and it should be fun. It should be fun. Oh, rookie numbers. Oh, I see. Oh, 11 hours on screen. I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, don't judge everybody by your own standards there, Gav. Um, it should be fun because a lot of times we're on screen for fun as well. <laughs> Maybe this 10 minutes of your life doesn't count as that. Um, more and more now, millennials, and, and I don't really like all those groupings and all those kind of things, but there is a suggestion that in, in just five years' time, as much as 70% of the workforce could be chats. That's, that's a nightmare. Have you Googled? Um, it's nice to have you on board, chats. Um, 
Yeah, not happy with that at all. Do you know who was playing? Um, Debbie Chatton's got the correct answer. Look, she's so smug. Um, if you've Googled, you're disqualified, though. Um, so, sorry, I better carry on talking. Um, yeah, so Millennial is going to be this massive group. Um, so, because we have the opportunity now to do micro learning multiple platforms, there could be uh, there's a lot less fuss, accessibility, and all that kind of thing. So, and it, and it can save us time. It can just save us time. So, there's benefits of it. We can break it down really bit by bit, very small bits. Um, that's that's the kind of the way that we want to do things, uh, just bit by bit. That's how we learn stuff now. So, small pieces repetition and that repetition will help memory so it'll help it stick in the memory there's a danger about repetition um and it kind of causes perfection but it will stick in the memory so if you give the same message it'll end up sticking also you can space um whereas before and things like one and two day courses three day courses five day courses ten day courses as you're old as me um you can space it so before we used to cram and try and get everything done. And well, we know cramming's not great from our study days. So if we can just drop little 10, 15 minutes in at a time, it will help. And that will then help our memory as well. So when we talk about micro learning, what are we talking about? Well, firstly, we can talk about things like animations, um, so videos. Um, we can use characters or we can real, use real people, but we can create environments that people recognize. So it's easier characters, people, places that, that they remember, and that will help. We can talk about infographics. Um, so there will be a natural flow. It also gives us the opportunity to put static pictures in, which is good. But if, you, if you're building infographics, they should have an easy, easy to understand headline. Think about the, the layout, and there should be a lot of white space on an infographic. So as the words and pictures do attract the eye, so less text. Yes, we want pictures. And bizarrely here, we, we mix the font and colors. They should blend, emerge, and complement each other, but they shouldn't all be one kind of style. That's one of the changes that we look for. Um, going forward for certain things, depending on um, what we're talking about, we can use chatbots to learn. So we use chatbots, I don't know if we're like contacting, a, I don't know, a an IT supplier, an internet supplier, a phone supplier. Uh, we might use a chatbot. And so we can train people like that as well. They're a bit more time heavy on the build, but, but that, that is a way that we could do it. Um, and good for socials as well. Um, it, it, uh, the more we repeat, the more the memory will stick. Now, if we can break it down, we can learn as we go. And, and I've referenced this before, but... Um, Simple things, think about how we learn to do things ourselves now. And, you know, a lot of times we'll go to YouTube, stuff like that. And I think I said, I, and these are not the hands of a workman, um, but, you know, I've done little bits around the house. Um, I don't know, a handle broke on one of my double glazing windows. And I was like, oh, God. And just very quickly Google that. It's like a three-minute video. And I can, <coughs> I can just watch that and I can replace it in just three minutes. Um, I don't need... To be able to refit windows so you can pick out the key pieces that people need in micro learning and give it to them when they need it whereas maybe with a longer course or an intervention it you, you'd be there for a greater period of time but really i just need that that three minutes so the benefits of it it should be quick to deliver so from a provider point of view, it should be quicker to build because you're only building a three minute, four minute, five minute one infographic. So it should be quicker. For the client, that therefore makes it more affordable, um, more consumable, and the desire is greater. There's flexibility because you've got like loads of bits, uh, maybe an infographic, maybe an animation. You can take one piece out and replace with something more up to date, current. Um, and maybe a change in, in staffing or something along those lines. So a lot more flexible. Um, it should be engaging if it's done well. It should be engaging. Um, the retention was there, certainly with videos where we can put backdrops in. And, um, you know, even things like that we use at the moment on um, meeting platforms like Zoom, etc., where people are putting black for, uh, platforms in. I was, actually, I was, I was working with somebody the other day and this. <laughs> Had a boss and he, he changed his backdrop um, 
on his meeting to the mood of the day, which I thought was quite nice. Nothing to do with now learning, but it made me laugh. Um, so what do we need to do um, as, as learners, as writers and, and builders of, of, learner, of learning? It should be written new. Um, so what we want to try and avoid is, is just saying, okay, we've got this you know, five-hour session or this two-day course. Let's just chop it into loads of bits and throw it out there. So it should be new. It should be different because it's got to be designed in that slightly different way. To include maybe things like uh, quizzes and games. Um, make it multi-tool, so not always the one thing. Uh, multi-tool. But things like quizzes attract people. And, and some of us will recognize that from social media. There's a quiz, oh, I just do that. Just for fun, I just want to do something along those lines. Um, so it works less impressively for complex subjects. So I don't know, an, an example I read about was like um, converse, um, like learning a language. My, macro, learner, uh, macro learning would be um, very good for things like, uh, I don't know, like conversational language. Like if you're going into a restaurant, learn a about that yeah so that that'd be good so if you're learning french find out how to order food etc just do that boom 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 what it would be less good at was studying french literature yeah so some things are going to need it so macro learning is not replacing every other form of learning it's just there for certain things simpler concepts in-depth subjects will need fuller learning so don't think oh great we can just do everything in a three minute video or chuck out an infographic that's not what this is about this is about getting it out there at the right time. Less complex subjects that can repeat to aid the retention. Lovely. So there's our headlines on macro and nano learning. The longest tennis match. I'm afraid I can't award it to Debbie Chan because you didn't get the seconds as well. So unlucky there, just 11 minutes and five hours. Um, it was at Wimbledon um, and it took place over three days between two guys um, called John Isner and Nicholas Mahout. Um, final set ended 70-68. Um, but well done, Mrs. Chat. To have you online. I hope you're well. And um, I'm sure the sun is shining where you are. Um, but thank you very much. Episode 70. Loved having you in my kitchen. See you next Tuesday. Enjoy your afternoons, everyone. Bye now.